Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net and welcome to another very exciting After Effects tutorial. We're going to be taking a look at creating a cool heads-up display. Now, this is definitely inspired by Iron Man and the work by The Orphanage. Uh, definitely check out the DVD. They have a special feature on there and uh, it's definitely inspiring. So, uh, go pick that up and maybe I won't get sued. Um, okay, so here's uh, what we're going to be creating. Okay, so Sam looks pretty important here. Um, he's got, you know, billions of dollars of technology and he's wearing a $3 t-shirt. So, kind of gives you an idea on, you know, what we're dealing with here. Now, the way we're going to approach this is individual components. Now, we have uh, this shield system. It's kind of a status information on shields and weapons, for example. We have the targeting system. We have the grid system, uh, you know, for aligning himself uh, while he's flying around at night helping old women cross the street and you know all the things that superheroes do but what's great about this tutorial is you're gonna be able to learn different techniques for creating cool gadgets and then depending on what your story's about you can create interesting looking interfaces based on the technology that you're trying to portray so with that said let's go ahead and get started I'm gonna create a new composition and what we're going to do is make it 640 by 360, 23976, and 5 seconds. We're going to choose OK. And we'll take our SAM close up footage. And uh, whoa, that's intense right there. So basically, I just told SAM to talk to yourself and look around. And, you know, luckily he actually was already doing that. So it turned out pretty good. Um, what we're going to do is first build the eye targeting system. So what we're going to do is create a new solid and we'll make it uh, white for example and we're gonna make it a square so the comp is wide a bit so we're just gonna change it to 360 by 360 and then choose OK so just we have a square there and then we'll take the circular ellipse tool and we'll double click and that creates a perfect circle on our layer now what I wanna do is duplicate the mask so edit duplicate and we're gonna play around with the mask now I'm gonna kinda of do some of this quickly but all the mask controls are very simple um, you know you have different operations we're gonna subtract it so we've added it and then we subtract it. it's exactly the same circle now for the second copy we're gonna bring the expansion in which is gonna leave us you know a perfect circle like we're watching uh, TNT and then we're gonna create another mask and what I wanna do is draw it from the center and click out and here here and maybe right there and we're gonna subtract this now the reason I put a point in the middle is that way if I want to change how much of this mask is shown it will be sort of a straight line from the center point so it just kinda of works out for uh, making this kinda of look cool now we're gonna make it a 3d layer and we'll hit R and bring up the rotation so we'll hide the masks for a moment and we're just gonna rotate it on the Z axis so it rotates just like that so I'm gonna alt click on the Z rotation and we're gonna type wiggle and we'll do point one comma 180 so point one times a second it's gonna rotate approximately 180 degrees randomly and so we get just a little bit of movement here now that's probably a little too slow so let's try point four okay that works now let's select the layer choose edit duplicate and now we have a copy that also is random and for the second copy we're gonna scale it down so I'm gonna hit S bring the scale down and maybe we make another copy control D and maybe bring the scale down of that and maybe the opacity down so the idea is just to kind of create a lot of random you know movement and things happening now we can make another copy and we can go into the mask hit MM and maybe we can solo it and maybe just change what it looks like so instead of a large circle maybe we can just make it a smaller portion like that and then scale it up and hit control D and so now we have a couple copies of that 
So, you know, we're just kind of creating something that looks important, even though it's not really. Now, we'll probably play around with the scale and the opacity, maybe lower the opacity of some of these. And, uh, you know, that looks good. Let's go ahead and take one more of these and duplicate it. And we'll go into the mask. And we'll just make it a very short piece. So. something like that and then we'll hit M and the second mask we're gonna hit MM bring the expansion even more which creates sort of a long uh, little piece there and we'll scale this up maybe now it's out of the bounds of our design here but that's okay for right now and we'll just duplicate this a couple times and everything sort of changes. What I'll do is uh, create a camera here and then back the camera out so we can kind of see what's going on. So these little things we made, um, you know, we can probably scale them down, maybe add a few into the interior part. T, lower the opacity, control D, and then scale those ones back up. Right now we've created this uh, design and what I want to do is pre-comp it all into a separate comp. So we'll select the top layer, hold down shift, grab the bottom layer and choose pre-compose, move all attributes and we'll call this target underscore one. So that's the target. Now I'm going to shut that off and we'll come back to that. And the next thing I want to create is a grid you know sort of like a positional grid and we're gonna do that with the new solid and this one will be comp size and choose OK then we'll choose effect generate grid and this looks pretty good here we'll go ahead we'll size the grid down to maybe 2.5 now to make this grid look a little bit more technical we're gonna duplicate the grid bring the border up so it's kinda thick and then change the blending mode to stencil alpha and then if we change the second point of the grid it's gonna kinda create a different look and that looks pretty cool and the idea behind this is just so you're not looking at a plain grid but rather one that has some markings on it and we'll go ahead and hit return and type grid so we'll make it 3D now we'll delete the camera because we don't need it right now and we'll take the grid the rotate tool and we'll rotate it down and we'll move it down kind of a lower area here We can change the color of the grid maybe to a light blue and maybe the transfer mode to add now let's add a little bit of life by adding some rotation to the Y axis so hit R alt click on the Y rotation and we'll just type wiggle point two five comma one hundred so 0.25 times a second, we're going to randomly, you know, go around 100 pixel change, or in this case, 100 degrees. So that way, we get that look, and maybe not so much, maybe just uh, 50 degrees. Wow, that's a lot. 25. Not too much. And we'll turn up the speed of this to maybe 0.5. So that's kind of cool, and you could even probably add it into the X rotation if you wanted to, but uh, this should work for right now. Um, the other thing we want to make sure we do is make our SAM close-up footage 3D, and then actually we'll pre-compose it. And let's leave all attributes here, and the reason why is that way it stays full screen, and then we can you know move it around when the camera moves. But then if we Alt double click on it we can come into the comp where it's full screen and create a new adjustment layer and then we'll choose effect color correction curves and we'll bring the darkness down just a bit and maybe to the red channel we'll bring it in so we kinda create a bluish look
and then we'll take the ellipse tool and draw a circle kind of around the main part of his face and then hit F and feather it out a lot and then we're going to subtract it and maybe hit MM and expand it a bit so the trick here is to kind of make it look like there's limited light coming into his mask so you can kind of play around with this depending on what you think uh, you know it would be like but maybe you just want the eyes to be lit up um, you know looking at this different information so whatever you prefer um, this is probably uh, this is probably good where we just see a little bit of his face there and then if we close that comp you can see it's updated here now our grid is overlapping so we'll move our grid forward a bit and back up now we will create a new camera now so new camera and we want it to be pretty wide because in order for a camera to fit inside of a mask um, it's going to take some doing so we'll make it wide and we'll take this layer maybe scale it down and move it up here and rotate it down so that's kinda cool now the other thing we want to turn on the camera depth of field so if I hit A uh, actually AA we can turn on the depth of field and if we turn up the blur amount we can get some nice depth and this is probably you know a good amount for right now and uh, that looks pretty cool so that's kind of a, a setup and let's go ahead and build another you know techie system what we'll do is we'll create a new solid and we'll go ahead and make it comp size and choose OK we're gonna take the rounded rectangle tool now I'm sorry if you're not on CS3 and above um, but uh, you can probably create this shape on your own I'm sure and we're just gonna create that shape and then we're gonna duplicate the mask and in the second one again we're going to subtract it and then feather it so that creates kind of a nice you know window look and then we're going to take the text tool and we're going to type uh, you know shield uh, maybe use uh, like Helvetica something you know just kind of a standard you know computer kind of font and then control D duplicating that text layer and then turning the size of this up and then we'll do you know like we'll type 45 like 45 percent shield now we want this number to fluctuate just a little bit maybe he's under fire maybe it's rattling um, the cool thing about After Effects it has some cool tools for creating random text so we're gonna take a look at a couple of those so we'll toggle down the text go down and we're going to turn on animate and at the bottom there's an option that says character offset now you probably can't see it but click character offset so this allows us to play around with the range the way we're going to do is just alt click we're going to type wiggle point uh, I don't know maybe we'll just do 3 comma 15 and that way we get you know a shield fluctuating you know maybe we don't maybe three and five so it doesn't fluctuate as much um, but you know that looks pretty cool and we can bring that down and maybe what we can do is create another text and we'll type a percentage and we'll make that white now we want to add some other information here and we're gonna take that white solid and just add in a quick line um, you know you can just use the rectangle tool I'm just using this tool here just to kind of give it a little bit of a rounded edge but just add a line to kind of allow us to put some more information below so we're gonna take uh, that 78 layer actually the 45 and we're gonna duplicate it scale it down and bring it below the line here and we want this number to be kind of long and random so just start typing some random values and then we'll move it over here make sure the lines to the left and push it up a little bit 
Now that number is going to randomly change also. So we'll duplicate that, put one below it, make this really small. Because there's always, you know, no matter what, if you ever watch, you know, these kind of things, there's always a lot of little information that would be impossible to read and utterly useless, but man, it sure does look cool. So just add some cool numbers there. And uh, you know, one important tip when you're doing this stuff, just make sure you have kind of even spacing between things because you don't want to jam everything up and you know make it look awkward. So here's one system. Uh, we'll go ahead and make all this 3D and we'll take the layer from the white background up to the percent sign and we'll pre-compose it. So layer, pre-compose, move all attributes and this is going to be called the shield system. And we're going to go ahead and make one more system and the reason I'm making these different systems is just to kind of show you some different tips and tricks related to each one. The next one is uh, pretty cool. So we'll create a new solid and we'll make it a square. 360 by 360 and choose OK. And then we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of drawing. So we'll take the pen tool and we're just going to kind of make a pointer. Maybe kind of like a compass maybe. And So you can just kind of straighten this out. If you hit uh, Control R, brings up some some cool you know grids, and you can bring stuff out, and this kind of helps to align points and make sure you know you're looking good. Now I'm also going to take the Ellipse tool, and we're going to draw a little circle right here. Hold down Control and Shift, and that'll make a perfect circle, and also start it from wherever you point your mouse, and we'll move it over a little bit. We can make it uh, red so you can see it and we're gonna make it uh, subtracted so that way there's just a little hole there and maybe we'll duplicate that mask hit MM we're gonna add the second copy of it so I duplicate it we'll add it back in and then we'll bring the expansion in so that way it just creates uh, a little hole there and then we take the pan behind tool here select the layer and we're gonna move the center pivot point down to where the center of the circle is here and the reason why is now if we rotate this layer it will rotate from that point and I'll just kinda look cool so here's uh, here's where the fun stuff begins I'm gonna go ahead and shut everything else off so we can just focus on uh, this little you know piece um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a random rotation so I'm gonna hit R and alt click on rotation or actually let's go ahead turn on the 3d layer switch and we're gonna alt click on Z rotation and we're gonna type wiggle uh, maybe 1 comma 50 and so now this is just gonna kinda randomly move around and I'm not sure exactly what this would represent but you know it's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do now is take the text tool and we're going to click and we're going to type, I don't know, let's just type 50 for example. And then we're going to go bring this down, bring down the text, and we're going to alt click on the source text and pick whip to the Z rotation. What that's going to do is print the number that the rotation is set to. So when it moves over here, the rotation value is negative 43. Unfortunately, it gives us a really long number. And there's some quick ways to sort that out. But what I'm going to do is just use one of these quick math expressions. So if I bring this down, here's what we just pick with, this whole value. And what I'm going to do is just move it down below there. And if we come here to the math commands, JavaScript math, there's one on the list a little bit lower than shows on my screen. It says math.floor. Um, this is what you're looking for here. Now value is what we're supposed to put here. So in this case, we're going to delete all this and move this into its place and then close it with a semicolon. And if we click away, that will basically take whatever the value is and bring it down to its lowest whole number. 
So now that number changes and uh, looks good. Now, what if we were to connect it to this sort of swinging value meter? Well, we could do that by parenting it. Now, one of the problems here is that it kind of rotates with it. So, to fix that, <laughs> make it 3D, we're going to hit R, we're going to Alt click on the Z rotation, and we're going to pick whip the rotation of the meter. And then to the end of this value. So right now it's just going to rotate even more. Um, what I'm going to do is to the value I'm going to type times or star negative one. So what that's going to do is reverse the rotation. So in this case it's going plus 17 and the expression is inverting it to negative 17 and you can see it's nice and level. So this is just kind of a cool you know trick to kind of create an interesting effect. So that way, whenever he's looking at the meter, he'll know exactly what it is, but he can also get a visual representation of what's going on. So that's the basic uh, setup here. Now, the other thing we may want to create is a new solid, is maybe just uh, some sort of marker system. So we could do that with a few rectangles. We can just draw a thin rectangle here. Uh, we'll move in, and we'll just draw a few more rectangles. And we'll hit, uh, let's see, we can duplicate that mask and hold down shift and the arrow keys and we're just going to move it down. So control D duplicates it, hold down shift, move the mask down. So this way we just kind of create a few uh, markers and it looks uh, like we, you know, spent a lot of time on this, which uh, apparently we are. We got lazy. Um, so that's good. And then if we take all of the masks, or better yet, we'll just take the layer here, duplicate it, control D, and then flip it. So hit scale, unlink it, and type negative 100. And that flips it, and we can move these over to the side. And now it's kind of just a cool, uh, you know, graph meter. Um, so we'll take all this stuff that we just created and of course we can make this more complex and tricky but you know this works for now. So we'll pre-compose it, we'll call this uh, meter, choose OK. So we'll turn everything back on here and let's just start compositing you know one at a time. So we'll turn the camera on, we'll leave it on and here we have our target system. Now the one thing I want to do about the target system is give it some depth. So I'm going to alt double click on the target system and we're going to move some of the layers around in 3D space. So we'll hit P, brings up the position and then we're just going to offset the Z value here. So when you move that it's going to change the position in 3D space. So we'll just kind of go through here and just randomly offset some of the numbers. We could do this with a script but you know this is easy too. So that way they're in 3D space and if I go to a custom view I can actually fly around and see that there is a little bit of depth to this uh, design that we just created. Now I'll close that. Unfortunately it's gone when you pre-comp it but if we turn on the collapse transformation switch here it brings back all that same 3D capability and with that switch on you can see that there's a little bit of depth to those layers. And I'll go ahead and make it a 3D layer also so we can move it around as needed. Um, we'll go ahead and reset that camera. And so for the target, we're going to scale this down and bring it off the face just a little bit in 3D space. So just bring it out, scale it down some more, and we'll put it over his right eye here. Now I want to give it a color. So I'm going to choose Effect, Generate, Fill. And we're going to fill it with maybe just a light blue color. And we'll change the transfer mode here to add. And that way it just kind of looks cool. Then we'll duplicate it, control D, and we'll move it off of the face uh, on the Z axis just a bit. And we might want to play around with this. Maybe make another copy, control D, and have a final copy that's even further out. And then if the camera rotates around, you know, you're going to get a lot of this kind of cool futuristic, uh, you know, looking 
scenario. So that's up to you. Uh, the depth of field is really going to make this effect cool. Now we want these other ones to seem a little more random. So you want to maybe rotate them or even offset the time so that they sample from a different time rather than all being exactly the same. So that's that. We'll shut that off now for a moment. The grid is all set. Now we have our shield. Um, that looks good. We'll choose generate fill. Red's a good color. Uh, we can go ahead and create a 3D layer out of it and rotate it so that it's facing him so he can read it and we'll move it out in 3D space and maybe scale it down. And maybe just put it right down here. And then we have our meter. We'll turn on the collapse transformation switch so that we can scale it down, make it a 3D layer, and we'll flip it around towards him as well. Now I just noticed something. These layers also need to be 3D. So everything's 3D so that the collapse transformation works. And now I can move this around and we can scale it down. Maybe put it down here. Maybe move it out in Z space and scale it down some more. Now we can do one other cool thing. We can kind of rotate it, which gives us, you know, a very basic illusion that this is kind of wrapping around inside. Um, you know, which may or may not be what you're going for. Also for the meter, we can give it a color, generate fill, and maybe we can do this sort of a blue color and also change it to add. So now we've got a lot of random stuff going on. Maybe we could go into the shield, take one of the text layers that's randomly generating numbers and copy it, edit, copy and then go into the main comp and paste it. And then we'll flip it around so it's facing him. And then we'll move it back in 3D space. And maybe we'll take a few numbers off of it and scale it down some. And just put some information up here, you know, it's just kind of make it look kind of random. Uh, maybe add a few extra numbers and letters, who knows. Um, and then you can maybe even just take one of them, duplicate it, hit U, and take the expression off of the character offset. And maybe we could actually type something like, uh, you know, system um, status or something like that. Something that, you know, looks important. And then we can take all this stuff and move it back in Z space so it's sort of out in front and maybe uh, you know scale it down a little bit or something. Now we turn the target back on. Now I did this one thing and it sort of rotated the whole target system out and what I did is I created a null object and I made it 3D, F4, 3D. We'll go ahead and put it down there with the target. And then I took all the target layers, parent it to the null, and then hit R, brought up the null rotation, and basically rotated the null. And it kind of brought it out. So, quick example, we'll keyframe the Y rotation. We'll move forward here. And just turn it out. It will just sort of rotate out as if, you know, the system is being called up to be used. And, you know, that's the other fun thing you're going to have. Um, you know, it's kind of creating all the different animation looks of how these systems are going to come online. That's uh, that's the fun part. Now, as far as giving this a little bit more life in 3D, let's create a null object. Now, keep it 2D. And the reason we keep it 2D is that way the camera won't move in Z space, but it will move in XY space. And then we can parent the camera to the null. And then hit P. Add an expression. Alt click on the stopwatch. We'll type uh, wiggle. 0.2, comma, I don't know, 200 for now. And we'll see what that does. Uh, that's way too much. Let's try uh, maybe 2 and 100. So this kind of creates a lot of movement. Might just uh, lower the amount here. See what that does.
probably a little bit slower, maybe by 0 0.75. The other thing that you may want to play with is the opacity of some of the systems so that you know they're not too overbearing um, like bringing the opacity down on the targeting system um, is kind of cool let's see maybe not so much blur and the other thing I did was I took the shield and I duplicated it and I just made it green so it looked just like a different system and I'll change it to add transfer mode there and I scaled it up and I moved it out in front here and I animated it on by just hitting P and then you know just kind of animating forward and then just pulling it into the view here and what's cool about that is then I kinda of added a green tint to his face so I think the way I did the the color was just with a green solid And what you might want to do, um, actually we'll make it uh, comp size here. What you might want to do is take that green solid, copy it, and actually put it inside of the SAM close-up comp. And just make sure you're at the right time. Look at that look. Whoa, that's creepy. Um, and this way, if we add a mask, uh, you know, just around this part of his face here. And we can feather it. And then change F4, change the transfer mode here. Let's see, uh, you know that actually looks kind of cool. Lower the opacity of that, and then bring the opacity of it on, so it's off, and then it it kind of fades on. Um, then in this one, just just line it up so that everything seems to happen at the right time. So here is that shield, and we'll animate it on say at this point and what's gonna happen is as it animates on then we got Sam's face back here turning green from the light of that you know system so if we just solo a few of these things you can kinda see um, you know what that's doing that comes on kinda lights up his face very kind of a cool effect um, the other thing that you might be thinking is what about reflections in his eyeballs well that's not um, a very difficult thing. Um, what you need to do is motion track his eyes and then make a copy of all of the stuff in the reflection and then simply scale it down and create a mask around his eyes and you know basically track it in. Um, but I don't think I'll be doing that today. <laughs> Check out the eye replacement tutorial. There's some tips in there and uh, probably learn a few things as well. Now one other thing you might want to do is go to your comp and I've already set this up but you want to create a mask that looks like the shape of a mustache and that way you kind of have the look of Tony Stark and just motion track that on and you know that looks pretty pretty awesome. So obviously there's tons of different possibilities with this kind of technique, but ultimately it's up to you. You know, um, the creativity is uh, what's going to make this look great. And uh, I uh, hope you guys have fun with this effect. If you want to discuss it, uh, come by the forum or the blog, uh, leave a comment or, uh, you know, post a topic. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. And also, you know, be sure to check out some of our great products. Uh, we've got some great design tools music, sound effects, um, all sorts of cool things. And of course, you know, this site runs on your guys' support. So, you know, whatever you can do is uh, definitely appreciated. I really love making, you know, more complex, more in-depth tutorials, and uh, I love to keep doing it. So, anyway, I'm Andrew Kramer for videocopilot.net, and uh, I will see you next time. Anyway, I've, uh, I've only got one thing to say since we are doing a heads-up display. And if you remember a movie that came out about 10 years ago, it was about a robot cop called RoboCop. And there's just one thing I have to say. Dead or alive, you're coming with me. <laughs> or better yet, Murphy, it's you. That's got to be the worst impression I've ever heard. I really hope this After Effects thing works out because that was... Pretty horrible.